So what happens if you ignore testers warning messages while using autopilot? Could you accidentally or intentionally ignore the prompts and still continue to drive the car safely? If you fell asleep at the wheel, what would the car actually do? Well, in today's short video, I'm going to demonstrate the autopilot warnings, how long they last for, and what happens if you do completely ignore them. Also, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and drop a like on this video as it really does help me out. So the Model 3 comes with autopilot included as standard, which allows the car to steer, accelerate, and brake for itself with little input from you. But here in the UK, it prompts you about every 15 seconds or so to hold or touch the steering wheel in order to continue the journey which kind of makes sense from a safety point of view, as you should have your eyes on the road anyway. And I recently uploaded a couple of videos demonstrating using autopilot on motorways, A roads, and around cities too, showing just how limited it is here still. So on to today's test, where let's say in theory, you had fallen asleep at the wheel. Obviously that's a worst case scenario, but you've fallen asleep at the wheel, you have autopilot enabled on the motorway, say. What are the messages that you would get? How long would those messages last for? So if you completely ignored the messages in the prompts on screen, what would actually happen? So I found a road here where it's completely dead. So you can see in front and you can see in the rear view mirror that there are no cards on this road at all. So it's a long enough strip that I'm able to test this out. Um, so let, let's find out. So the first warning that you'll get is after about 13 seconds and it's apply slight turning force to steering wheel and part of the screen will begin to flash blue you'd usually just tap or wiggle the wheel and the messages actually disappear for about another 13 seconds or so. So this is a message that we all see. You always see this in autopilot or full self-drive. And then at around 24 seconds, you'll get a beeping sound and the message now turns red. Now at 40 seconds, the beeping becomes persistent. The message changes to auto steer unavailable for the rest of the drive, hold steering wheel to drive manually and the car actually begins to auto brake gradually as well. Now the hazard lights come on, and finally at about 53 seconds the car brakes harder and then actually comes to a complete stop putting the car into hold mode. So in total it took about 60 seconds from engaging autopilot, not touching the steering wheel at all, ignoring all of those messages, and the car coming to a complete stop. So how far do you think I travelled during that 60 second window? Obviously 60 miles an hour, it would be about one mile across that one minute, but the fact is that we've had to brake and come to a complete stop. So now we're in hold mode. We can take control of the car again by moving the steering wheel and accelerating as normal. The hazards have also turned themselves off automatically and we're now back up to normal driving speed again. So I want to enable autopilot again, Let's, and I just wanted to see what would actually happen. But firstly, you'll notice that the small gray steering wheel icon, which is usually displayed just underneath the speedo, isn't there at all. And when I try to engage autopilot by double tapping on the stalk on the right hand side, we'll actually get a warning message, auto steer unavailable for the rest of the drive, hold steering wheel warning has been ignored. So essentially the car has banned or blocked me now because I ignored those messages and won't let me engage autopilot at all. So the only way to reset or re-enable this now is to stop the car completely putting it into park and then back into drive again. Once you've done this, you'll be able to use autopilot again as normal. Now, as this was obviously the first time that I'd ever tested this out, I was surprised, but also pleased to see how the car handled the situation. The hazard lights coming on was a nice feature as well, which kind of makes sense. So should you have say fallen asleep at the wheel, it's making other cars and other people around you aware of the situation um, that you obviously have no control of the car. But what if the car could go one step further too? So we already have an SOS button in the car just next to the hazard button. And I wonder if an emergency call should or could be made at the same time. I mean, if you're ignoring the warnings over a 60 second period, other than for a test, there's a good chance that you're either asleep at the wheel or in some form of physical danger. So the car could come to a complete stop as it's done so, but then it could either prompt or ask you to confirm or deny an outgoing call to the emergency services. But as I said at the beginning of the video, just remember that using autopilot or full self-drive, you should have your eyes on the road anyway, so you should have your hand on the steering wheel. There'd be no reason in a realistic situation where you would allow the car to drive for 60 seconds without touching the steering wheel at all and just ignoring the messages. 
um, and also the the warnings that you're getting on screen are only applicable if you're using autopilot or full self-drive if you're using cruise control for example you would have your hand on the steering wheel anyway so the car would not come to a complete stop um, because you're already controlling the steering wheel you're just letting the car stick to the speed limit instead whereas with autopilot it's obviously controlling the car in terms of steering and braking as well so that kind of wraps up this short video today on what happens when you ignore the autopilot warning messages also i just want to say that i hope you're keeping safe during this current lockdown wherever you are in the world so where are you located maybe drop your location in the comments below um, or like or comment on the location if it's already mentioned and as i've highlighted in previous videos as well any questions or suggestions you've got in relation to my ownership of, uh, of a Tesla Model 3, just drop them in the comments below. I do honestly try to respond to every question that I get. And if I don't respond, then I am taking those suggestions or those comments and I'm trying to create content for the future as well. So once again, any questions, any suggestions, just pop them in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching this video. And I hope it was useful to you. Um, please don't forget to like, subscribe and follow me on Instagram. Until next time.